All right, I will call the uh, recommending committee meeting to order. Uh, we're in compliance with the open meeting law? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, each bill moved out of committee today will be eligible for adoption at the February 6th City Council meeting. Put that out of the way. Okay, item number three, uh, bill number 2013-1, possible... Ricky. Sorry, Ricky? Yes. Don't forget to mute, mute your telephone. Say it again? You mute your phone, we've got your son in there. Okay, I got you. Go ahead. Uh, bill number 2013-1, possible action amend the Unified Development Code to revise the provisions governing master sign plans as they apply to certain gaming and downtown properties. Uh, Director of Planning, Boom Tag. Members of the committee, this text amendment is part of our initiative to streamline processes for applicants. Uh, what we're proposing to do is in the area of the downtown that's covered by our special sign districts, we had uh, a requirement in the code that they go both to our downtown design review committee and to planning commission. What we're proposing to do is to just drop one of those and so that uh, master sign plans in our special areas in the downtown would only go to the downtown design review committee for approval. This will shave about 30 days off of the approval process for a master sign plan and then also reduces the duplication that we have to do for taking them both to the downtown design review committee and to the planning commission. And so uh, this will help to support the priorities that City Council has adopted for the downtown area, and we would request your support of this. Uh, very good. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this item? Uh, seeing none, uh, Councilman Barley, have any questions? Councilman Bobbin? <laughs> um, the uh, question I would have is this doesn't get into the details. No, we don't change the requirements. It's just the approval process. Okay. And this came out of the process that we had for the Golden Gate Casino, where we had to take them to both committees, and we could have saved them time had we only uh, had them go to the Downtown Design Review Committee. Then I will not approval of 2013-1. Councilman Barr, are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those against? Okay, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number four, uh, bill number 2013-2 for possible action authorizes the deferral of sewer connection fees for property located within a redevelopment area under specific circumstances. This is proposed by Brad Jerbic, City Attorney, and who will be speaking on this item? Uh, I guess I will, Brad Steed, uh, Deputy City Attorney. Um, uh, I was hoping that either a Public Works or someone from the Business Development would be here, but I will do my best. Um, as you know, sewer connection fees cost, uh, are high. Uh, they currently, under code, are required to be paid in connection with the building permit. This proposal would allow uh, businesses within the re any redevelopment area to uh, pursue a program that would be established by the city manager or a designee that would allow those fees to be deferred over a period not to exceed three years. The uh, ordinance would authorize the manager or a designee to establish eligibility criteria and a process uh, program requirements and then a means of collection in case uh, if these aren't forthcoming at the end of the referral period and uh, recommend approval. Sure, we'll have Thank you. This actually came as a result of uh, a lot of inquiries that I made uh, coming out of the campaign of 2011. I mean, we had, uh, and I became acquainted with some of the needs of the downtown businesses especially those people who were trying to move into the old buildings that we had that were sitting vacant. And um, what we found out was that a lot of people were having to pay really high fees. I mean, they pay like 12 or 13 bucks for every sink, every toilet. And all of a sudden, you know, you, you, know, you don't have to pay if a building isn't going to be changed. I and mean, water uses aren't going to be changed. The second you start adding stuff, it really gets up there. And so if you change your purpose, you're coming under the new code. I know Orlando can speak to me. 
fiscal impact that it seems like it. It, 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 and the one that drew it my, to my attention was the little bar, the Urban Lounge, um, Velveteen Rabbit, they have a bill of somewhere over $20,000 for this kind of thing because they moved into a business that was not previously. A bar had no food service previously or anything like that. So, you know, these old buildings are hard to get into as it is. There's a lot of unexpected problems. And then, and then this came on top. And it's a result of uh, probably relying so hard on connection charges during the high growth period, like, uh, like everything else in town, like the water utilities relying on connection charges during, you know, 90% of the cost of water systems. And so I think, I think we're going to end up having to do it all the time if we don't get in another high growth period to start to think about sewer and other charges spreading them out over the entire community. You know, rather, because otherwise we just could really limit the chances of business is cutting up. But anyway, so the three years is a reasonable period of time to defer. It's not a forgiveness. Uh, although sometimes uh, we can help with that by uh, what the ISP program, whatever you call it. Sorry, quick story. So anyway, the mayor and I heard these problems in our campaign in 2011. And uh, it's, it's, it's a while we've been saying that there is a bill that can help. Okay. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this item? Any other comments from the recommending committee? Uh, I, I move for approval of uh, bill number 2013 2. Thank you. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. Aye. All those against? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Okay, bill number, uh, this is item number five, bill number 2013-3 for possible action authorizes one or more pilot programs by which mobile food vendors may occupy parking spaces on de designated public streets for the purpose of vending. This is sponsored by Mayor Carolyn Goodman, and who will be speaking on this particular item? Oh, you jump up and down. Well, you, why don't you, you can both speak on it, then. <laughs> if you're looking at each other, you might as well both comment. Karen Douglaston, uh, Business Licensing Manager. Um, this uh, concept came out of the committee that was assigned to work on, on mobile food trucks. And it was the second piece, as you know, the, the City Council passed an ordinance on food trucks. One of the recommendations in there was that they be limited in the public right-of-way to a period of 30 minutes unless they are at a special event or they are in um, operating under a lease with the City of Las Vegas for, for a parking space. This is the piece that would allow the City of Las Vegas to lease our parking spaces and uh, that, that would be designated for that purpose. Um, two food trucks. Uh, we would conduct a lottery in business licensing um, to allow uh, us to, to choose a, a, a certain time frame. Um, and they would you know, basically a reason pay for the use of that parking spot. Um, so I'm working with um, the group that we had, both the mobile food vendors and many of the downtown businesses. Several of the places that were identified were the uh, regional justice center, where we had a lot of food trucks showing up at the lunch and morning time um, in, uh, in our doing over spaces on, on occasion. We had the um, uh, downtown transportation center, and then we had the Fremont East District as well. And I know that Brandy Stanley is here, and she's been working with uh, the various uh, those various communities, looking at, at where those those uh, parking space selections might be. And I'll be glad to turn it over to her at this point in time. Thank you, Brandy Stanley, Parking Services Manager. Um, we Parking Services has been involved in this as well, along with business licensing from the start. Uh, we have three proposed locations within the downtown area um, that we seem to have broad community support. One was around the Regional Justice Center by the Bonneville Transit Center, um, and then there's also a space behind City Hall. The Fremont East Entertainment District at this point is not included in the program, and that has to do with the fact that we received a letter uh, from the Fremont East Entertainment District Board requesting not to be included in part of the program. So should this ordinance pass, basically those are the three locations we would be looking at. We would install parking meters in these locations, charge $5 per hour, 
Um, IT has been working with us to set up a reservation calendar that could eventually be open to the public so they can see when and where and who will be at each one of these locations during various points of the day. Um, it's proposed to be a pilot program because we want to try it out, working in conjunction with the business community and the mobile food vendors, try it out for six months, see how it works, make any, make any tweaks to the program, and then um, come back to the city council once we have a program that works well and sort of solidify it in the code a little bit further. <coughs> so that's where we're at right now. Thank you. What if, um, and I don't know how you're going to mark these, but maybe you don't understand, uh, they'll have to have their own sign. And I assume they're going to have periods of time when they're not occupied by the people. It would happen to even make sense that this, this space should be available to get a program of times when they're not going to be. It would make sense, and this ordinance will authorize us to legally post signs reserving spaces for food trucks. At this point, we were planning on designating them for food trucks 24 hours a day, seven days a week during the pilot period program, depending on what the demand is. What we really don't know is what we're going to get in the way of the number of food trucks that want and the hours that they want to use those spaces. So during the first six months, that's what we would take a look at, the usage of the space, and then look at if there are consistent times when food trucks are not interested in the space, then repurposing those spaces during the off hours to the general public. Now I know uh, that RJC, the judges there would very much like to get rid of parking because they're scared of the bomb. But if you have uh, a situation like this where you've got to be very specific kind of people, mm -hmm. and those people are committed and known and they're licensed in authority, maybe that would help to use the fear and the human being objections to people taking up space. I think I can get these one of the instructions I'm taking two spaces. The trucks would take, on average, about two spaces, and that's the size of the space that we're looking at designating. Um, with regards to the RJC, I believe up next to the building on that block that, they, that you're referring to, there are, um, I don't know exactly, but there's about at least 20 parking spaces there. So this would eliminate two of them for public parking, uh, but it would leave the remainder. Well, again, I guess my main question in general is what is wrong? You know, uh, and the frustrating people that can't park there when there is no parking, so how do we make sure that they understand that they can get told that the truck comes along? Um, you know, we're going to have to know this. Posting the spaces adequately is very, very important, as well as the meters that we're going to install there are going to be dedicated to that space, and um, they will require the input of a PIN number to even pay the meter. So if someone parks in that space and goes to pay the meter, they will not be able to which will help along with the signage. Yes. Yes. Technically, they would be eligible for citation, but I can tell you that we pretty much don't have anyone downtown at 3 o'clock in the morning, so I don't believe it would be an issue. What we could do is after we hold the lottery, we could find out when the space is not reserved by free truck vendors, and then we can repost, we can post this, the signage accordingly, if that would work. Anybody from the public wishing to be heard on this item? Seeing none, any other questions from the recommended committee? Okay, motion to approve. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? Motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Okay, uh, citizen, uh, side of number six, citizen participation. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters within the jurisdiction of the committee. No subject may be acted upon by the committee unless that subject is on the agenda and is scheduled for action. If you wish to be heard, come to the podium, give your name for the record. The amount of discussion on any single subject, as well as the amount of time any single speaker is allowed, may be limited. Anybody from the public wishing to comment under citizen participation? Seeing none, we'll close citizen participation and drive a motion to adjourn. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Take care. There you go.